The Ministry of Education and Culture, through the Department of Culture, serves as a focal point for the preservation and development of the culture and traditions of the Virgin Islands. Culture Week, which was first observed in October 1994, serves as a time to focus on the cultural heritage of the Virgin Islands. It passes on relevant information to the younger generations, increase the awareness of residents on the history and culture of the Virgin Islands, and create opportunities to link various aspects of life to culture through the selected theme for the week. This year, Culture Week will be celebrated from the 15th to the 20th of November under the theme, Remembering the Legends of Virgin Islands Music, Our Treasures. I am your GIS host, Bria Smith, and on this program, Director of the Department of Culture, Mrs. Luce Hodge Smith, and Deputy Director of the Department of Culture, Ms. Anne Leonard, join me to discuss the 2015 Virgin Islands Culture Week as the department continues to ensure the preservation of the Virgin Islands cultural heritage. When we return, it's an informative program on Virgin Islands Culture Week, so stay tuned. Aspire in your territorial attire this year for the 22nd annual Virgin Islands Culture Week. Join the challenge as Virgin Islanders display their most creative territorial wear for a chance to win. Display your cultural pride by being a part of the Territorial Outfit of the Day Challenge. Capture and post an image of yourself in your creatively designed territorial attire on Facebook and use the hashtags VI Territorial Wear and VI Culture Week and be sure to tag the Government of the Virgin Islands. Join the Ministry of Education and Culture through the Department of Culture as we remember the legends of Virgin Islands music. Virgin Islands Culture Week 2015. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us, Mrs. Hodge-Smith and Ms. Leonard. Thank you for having us. Thank both. you. Mm -hmm. I want to start the program by first asking, what is Virgin Islands culture and how does it differ from other Caribbean countries or other countries on a whole? Well, I'll start basically, Bria, by um, just giving a brief um, definition of what culture is, because culture's definition doesn't change whether you're from the Virgin Islands, the Caribbean, or from across the world. So in a nutshell, culture is a way of life, and um, it's our belief system, it's the norm, it's the way you do things, that, and it also, culture, what culture does, it's help to identify who you are as a people. And basically, our culture evolves from our history, and certain things that happen over time and it becomes a part, a way of life. So when you ask about what's, what differentiates us from the region or the Caribbean, um, there's a lot of similarities to our culture because we have similar history. Um, so when we say similarities, we're talking about the way we speak, the way we prepare our food, our music, our just island life, um, the things that we do to make a living. Um, so when we, for example, our music, for example, we have our Fungi band or Fungi music. Um, in certain Caribbean countries, they call it by a different name. Across the waters, right next door, we have the U.S. Virgin Islands and they call it Quail Bay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have somewhere else that called Tuck music or Scratch Band music. But they're similar instruments. And again, coming out of history, um, we, as our the ingenuity of our people to create our own instruments, um, to create this sweet sound in music. Like for example, they use the resources that were available, such as the, um, the sardine can mm. to make the, the ukulele or the squash to make the squash itself and using a bath pan to, to create a bass or, or the, um, 
the bamboo sh uh, bamboo strip or stick to make a flute. So um, when we look at our culture and um, defining it, there are similarities, but like I say, it's different. It's the way we do things. For example, we say peas and rice. We say peas and rice here in the Virgin Islands. Other countries say rice and peas, <laughs> although it's two ingredients, rice and peas. Um, so it's just the norm. It's just the way we do things that, um, again, looking at um, other things such as our accents. Um, we can differentiate our people from our sisters and brothers from the Caribbean because of the accents. You can tell where um, someone from Trinidad is from or Jamaica and of course the Virgin Islands. And even within the Virgin Islands, you can tell somebody from North Sound or somebody from Long Look or somebody from Town. Or... So we have different um, accents that help to identify us. And we talk about culture in general, the way we do things, our way of life. So just to, just so some examples, um, again, just to uh, reiterate that the culture evolved out of our out of our history, out of um, you know life in in general. That's a really great mm -hmm. way of explaining what culture is and mm -hmm. what differentiates Virgin Islands culture from other cultures. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a misconception or a misunderstanding of what culture is here in the BVI, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that you were able to to uh, expand on that. So why is it important for us to truly understand our Virgin Islands culture? Well, as I said before in the definition, culture helps to identify um, us as a people. Um, so you definitely need to understand who, you're, who you are, what your culture is. And once you understand that, you understand who you are as a Virgin Islander. And it's truly important for us to pass on this information to the younger generation so that they don't have this identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, so that it will help to shape them and really help them to understand who they are as Virgin Islanders. And the basis for that is understanding your heritage, understanding your culture, and that includes understanding your family heritage. And it's a broad, broad section or a broad cross-section of things that you really need to understand. Of course, we have um, young people who have dual heritage. And I often say that, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, actually, because then what's left up to the parents and the grandparents to do is to teach the children about their dual heritage, because one parent could be from another island or another country, and one could be from the Virgin Islands. So the opportunity is there to teach them both, um, and then to compare comparisons. For example, if you're from the Caribbean, you can talk about in the home, well, in St. Vincent, we do this. But here in the Virgin Islands, we do this. So they understand that they are of dual heritage. So it's important to understand not just Virgin Islands culture, but whatever cultural background that's in within that family. Um, mm -hmm. Culture Week has been observed over 10 years now, since 1994. Yes. Why is it important for us to observe mm -hmm. culture for that one week. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important for us? Okay. When Culture Week was established, as you said, in 1994, the concept was that we need to focus on Virgin Islands culture. I know we don't like to say BVI culture, but <laughs> or British Virgin Islands, but what is specifically of the BVI, of the Virgin Islands? And we decided to have this week where we will focus, as you mentioned in your introduction, teaching the younger generations about their cultural heritage and persons that live among us here in the Virgin Islands, for them to understand who we are as Virgin Islanders through our culture. And um, the focus of the week is just on cultural Virgin Islands culture and recognizing and not withstanding the fact that we are now a very diverse community. Um, I understand the, the number of residents that live here among us, it has increased to 115 or even 100 and, uh, 112 to 115. So we have a, a melting pot mm -hmm. of cultures here. And for us to stand out as Virgin Islanders, we just need to focus a bit on what is Virgin Islands culture and to get our students to participate in actually learning um, more in a, in a kind of um, in a tr uh, structured way, sorry, in a structured manner to teach them about um, their heritage and um, their culture of the Virgin Islands. Great. 
So what are some of the initiatives that the department are responsible for in the preservation of culture in the Virgin Islands? And what are some of the things that the department is doing to get the youth more involved? Well, one of the things we have realized for a number of years now is that in order to preserve the culture and make sure that our culture is passed on, we have to pass it on to our young people, our youths. And we have been working through the support of the Department of Education. We've established a school's cultural committee. Mm -hmm. And by that, we mean there's um, a teacher from each respective public school in the territory and some of the private schools as well. Uh, we meet with them. We discuss various activities. We encourage them to um, engage the students in some of the traditional games. Um, I've seen recently mm -hmm. that one of the schools uh, was posting on Facebook. They were actually cooking fungi and fish. Wow. <laughs> and these are things that our schools are now being able to pass on through our students because of the efforts of the relationship between the Department of Culture and our schools through the um, Schools Cultural Committee. We have also had a program which we call Art in the Classroom. We hire um, craft and art instructors. Most of them may be retirees from the education system. And currently, we're working with three schools, the Alexandrina Maduro School in Bargas Bay, the Altius Gatliff School, and the Ivan Dawson School in King Garden Bay. And we have that instructor who um, engages the students in learning local crafts mm -hmm. and various um, cultural um, aspects that we're able to actually pass on. And hopefully, when the kids go home, they will show their parents as well, especially if they're not um, of BVI heritage. Mm -hmm. So we've been very pleased with those two efforts. And we have actually um, been supporting our schools with um, helping to finance their involvement in our emancipation celebration, namely the August Monday Parade. A number of the schools that you would have seen in our August Monday Parade they were sponsored or supported by the Department of Culture. And we know in various schools, you have a Spanish club, you mm -hmm. have a drama club. We are moving forward to actually form cultural club, wow. Virgin Islands Culture Club. And it's important too because as a young person, you want to fit in and be hip. So it's going to be necessary for us too at the department to make being a culturally oriented person appealing mm -hmm. to young persons as well. So through those efforts, we uh, have been appealing to the younger persons in our community. That's great. I, I really like those initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, I know every year the department chooses to focus on various aspects of Virgin Islands culture. Uh, this year, you have decided to focus on remembering the legends of our Virgin Islands music, our treasures. That is the theme. Mm -hmm. How did the department come up with the theme and what is the goal for focusing on music in the Virgin Islands for this year? Every year we focus on something different. Last year, I remembered we, we were focusing on, I think the theme might have been Penny, penny save is a penny on. Yeah. Cultural. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. year, there's so many different aspects that we do look at because there's food, there's language, and music is something everyone can relate to. And whether it's a fungi music or calypso music or other form, that is something that is a universal language. So we felt that this year was an opportune time to concentrate or provide highlight to the legends of Virgin Islands music. And in compiling that list, we've discovered, wow, we have so, we have had so many talented musicians here in this country, and we continue to have these great musicians. Mm -hmm. So that's how we actually came about um, 
with the theme for this year, Remembering the Legends of Virgin Islands Music, Our Treasures. So take us through the, the, the process of preparing for Culture Week. I know it has to be a big and hard task <laughs> to have to prepare for something so big and so important to our Virgin Islands. Well, it is big and hard, but um, <laughs> it's enjoyable. Uh, we enjoy Culture Week, especially the schools. Oh my gosh, at one time we said we weren't going to have a Culture Week and it's like, oh no, you can't <laughs> at least have a Culture Day. Mm -hmm. And there was one year we did have a Culture Day simply because um, the schools decided that we weren't going to not go a year without having our Cultural Week or Culture Day activities. But the process is after a festival, um, we take a little break and then when school reopens in September, we call our committee with the school's cultural committee and we sit down and we start planning. We come up with our theme and then based on the theme, we come up with activities that will help to highlight the theme. Um, so it's, it's not a long process per se, but it's enjoyable. And then we set right into the logistics of contacting our wonderful GIS information <laughs> officers, et cetera. Um, and we plan the week of activities. Um, so in a nutshell, it's, that's about basically it. But once we have the support of um, the ministry, of course, and our ministry of education, our parent ministry, and the support of the school's cultural committee, once everybody agrees on this is where we're, what our focus is for this year, then we proceed with the logistics. Great. So what's, what's the difference from this year's Culture Week from the other Culture Weeks? Well, the only difference is um, the theme mm. and the focus. Because um, there are basic things that we do um, over the years. For example, we can't have a Culture Week without our food fair. <laughs> um, this year, we're not having a march. We've had a march for the last few, uh, two or three years, but we're not having the march this year. We actually thought about a fungi tramp, <laughs> but that didn't come off. Um, but we will try it one of these years and have it late in the evening instead of the march during the hot sun, mm -hmm. we'll have a fungi tramp. Um, so the, the, the activities are geared towards the, um, the, the theme and to highlight it. There's one thing that we're not going to be able to, to comp accomplish during the week but it's worthy to mention, and we are going to, to do it, and that's a documentary on our musicians of the Virgin Islands that have made it on the world stage, mm. and we have quite a bit. <laughs> and what we're going to do, we're going to highlight the photo of this individual, these individuals, we're gonna give a brief bio about them, and play some of their music. Um, I don't know if you want me to mention some of them. That would be great. Um, some <laughs> persons like, um, John Lucian, mm. he's from Harrigan Estate. Um, Mark Christopher, um, Don Penn. I know people remember Don Penn, this real famous song that every. Um, oh, no no. no, no, no. It's no. actually a reggae song. It's a reggae song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Vernon Pickering, the editor for the, um, the Island Sun newspaper. We have two Faulkner ladies, um, Eugenie, Eugenie Faulkner and Gracita Faulkner. One was from Anigata and one was from Virgin Gorda. Mm -hmm. And they, ha I think they're opera singers. Yes. And then we have um, Emile, Milo Francis. He was more in the US Virgin Islands, but he's from the Virgin, from the, our side of the Virgin <laughs> Islands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, Robert Eddie Francis, I think that's Milo's brother. Mm -hmm. And I see one here, Elvino Sifu George. I yes. think Anne couldn't explain who that is. I believe he's from Virgin Garda, right? Actually, Mr. Alvino um, George was actually a native of North Song in Virgin Garda, and he was widely known throughout the Virgin Islands as Sifu. Um, with Christmas just around the corner, you're going to be hearing um, his most, one of his most popular songs, which is Santa Send Me. Um, and it goes like this. I, obviously, I, I don't plan to win any Grammys, but it goes like this. Santa send me, he said, have a merry. So who doesn't know that? Mm -hmm. Whenever Christmas comes around, you are going to hear Sifu. And he was also um, very involved in the USVI in the Calypso Arena. 
I understand too from the research that we have done, there was a very popular song in the 80s which Imagination um, had on one of their albums called Teresa Rockin'. So he was the voice on that um, song as well. So we have a lot of talent which we have harvested here in the Virgin Islands from all different areas. And even recently we see Ayaz in mm -hmm. his music videos. Mm -hmm. And um, we've claimed Melanie Omaro, of course, mm -hmm. and um, all the others that Ms. Hodge-Smith had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, yes, uh, the idea basically is to um, create a documentary mm -hmm. on, on these musicians who are artists who have made it on the world stage. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great something because I don't think a lot of people know a lot of these musicians who have actually made it on the world stage and mm -hmm. to be able to highlight them and to show what they've done for the Virgin Islands, I think that's a great something that the mm -hmm. department is doing. I know a large part of Culture Week mm -hmm. is, it involves the schools. What are some of the activities that some of the schools mm -hmm. will be doing that we, the public, can look forward to? <laughs> the schools have been um, very supportive this year. They, they always come on board every year, and we've seen a lot more of the private schools as well coming on board. So many of the activities that are planned do include, of course, since we're focusing on music, they've invited a number of the local musicians to come to the schools. They've invited storytellers as well. Um, they've also um, engaged a number of fungi bands. So next week, our local fungi bands will actually be extremely busy because they're going to be going from various schools throughout the territory um, as, as the schools celebrate their cultural day as well. The first school celebrating their cultural activities is actually the Ebenezer Thomas School. And their activity will be taking place on Thursday, November 12th. Mm. And most of the other activities will take place from Monday the 16th of November until the 20th. Mm -hmm. So, um, Aside from a lot of the school activities and from the food fair and, and that sort of um, events, what can we as Virgin Islanders do to celebrate Culture Week at home or at our jobs or even with our peers? Well, I would suggest that uh, we have, uh, in addition to the week of activities, we are and we've had some bulletins go out and some notices go out about inviting, encouraging everyone to wear the territorial dress on Friday the 20th. Um, you can participate by um, wearing the dress that day. If you don't have an actual dress, you could wear something that's made of the territorial fabric. Mm -hmm. Whether you go to work in the private sector, because I know sometimes they're a little strict um, with the attire that you wear, but you can wear a tie. Um, the gentlemen can wear a tie, the ladies can wear a, a cassage or a belt or a sash around their waist or something. We like to encourage everyone to wear something with the territorial fabric. Um, in addition to that, you can visit your, your child's school mm -hmm. and spend a day, spend a half day, spend as much time as you possibly can. I know the schools will be sending letters to the parents <laughs> asking them to bring this item or send that item and by supporting and simply have, who knows, you can have a lunch in your, in the, in your, um, your, at your office. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Decide that everybody will bring something locally prepared or some drinks or you know locally made drinks and just have your own cultural activity within your office. Um, it's up to them to be creative, but those are just some of our suggestions. And it will be great if they do decide to have these activities, they'll let us know, because then it will give us an idea of what's being done outside of the schools, because most times we are aware of what the schools are doing, but we're not aware of what everyone else is doing. And I'm sure others are doing activities as well. Did you want to add something? Ms. Yes, um, we spoke about the schools okay. earlier and I wanted to make special mention that 
at the Enid Scatliff pre-primary school, they will be um, provided with a, um, a special coloring book. I mean, every coloring book for kids are special, but this one is extra special, and I'm going to show it here today. Um, they're going to be presented with a coloring book, which was actually uh, crafted by my our good friend, Kareem <laughs> Nelson Hall. Everyone knows Kareem. And um, this coloring book is entitled My BVI Coloring Book, Wonders of the Virgin Islands. Um, it actually has 22 images, and it comes with a pack of crayon for each of the students. So they are going to be presented with the coloring book, which has several of our territorial signs and symbols, which will enable them to more fully appreciate the symbols and signs for our country. Virgin Gorda is known as the musical city. I think we're all familiar with that. Yes. And seeing that the theme for this year focuses on music, what can we expect from Virgin Gorda? Mm -hmm. Actually, um, <laughs> the two schools, three schools on Virgin Gorda, the Brigado Flags Primary and Secondary, and the Robinson O'Neill Memorial School in North Song, um, they are actually staging their culture days as well. And this year, because of our focus on music, we sat and we thought and we said to ourselves, well, Virgin Gorda has been known as musical city from as far back as we know it. Yeah. And um, the reason that they were known as musical city, city is because so many great bands were actually um, out of Virgin Gorda in the earlier days. So we came up with the idea that why not have a photo exhibit in Virgin Gorda, showcasing the Virgin Gorda musicians and bands which we've produced over the years. And that will be taking place on Wednesday, November 18th at the administration complex in the Valley at the Vantapool building. So the public is um, quite excited about the exhibition, and rightfully so. We've actually compiled a list of 12 bands and musicians that we will be highlighting, and they go as far back as the late 60s. Um, the first band is called The Dove. It's actually a band that the late Brigado Flax mm -hmm. played in, and he was a man of many talents, mm -hmm. those of you who may have known or heard of the late Brigado Flax. The Vibrations as well, that was the band in the late 70s. The Virgin Flames, the Poop Sax, that's one of our well-known Fungi bands. And we were actually um, so excited when we spoke with the families and they said to us, you know, we even have two original poop sack t-shirts which were never worn. Wow. They still have the banner that they used to hang on the side of the truck when they would go serenading Christmas morning. So they have um, a museum themselves <laughs> within the Stevens family which we are looking forward very much to seeing. There's also a band by the name of The Entrepreneurs which was formed by Mr. Ashburn Harrigan. Latitude Stars, a band out of North Song. Caribbean Ecstasy, or Ecstasy. You know, that was the band that stopped Jam Band at the roundabout <laughs> some years ago, and we still talk about it. <laughs> Elvis White, Morris Mack, and the Mack Five. Morris Mack is also the creator and the artist behind the song we hear almost every day. It's a beautiful day in paradise. Sensation 2000, of course, Leon and the Hot Shots, and another band called Tropic Palms. So we will have um, photographs and bios, and we're inviting the general public to come out and see the exhibit, and um, they will not be disappointed. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, I, I, maybe I'll just get my mom to come and see some of them. Mm -hmm. In addition to the events for Culture Week, what other events or initiatives can we look forward to from the Department of Culture? Well, before we move on to that, I'd just like to add that okay. um, the songs, because I think we 
were able to secure some of the songs, even the right. and neglected to mention the poop sax. I think is <laughs> they have a a, um, a tape mm -hmm. of their music. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to create a CD with at least two songs from each of those bands, mm -hmm. and a limited amount will be presented and given away. I think on Wednesday. Yes, there's a limited <laughs> amount. So if you do not come to the photo <laughs> exhibit, you're going to lose out because <laughs> the music of these bands mm. are treasures themselves. Yes. And we've been able to secure, remember what we used to call mm -hmm. a 45? Mm -hmm. With that little yellow <laughs> thing in the middle that you used to play on a record player. And just thinking about having <laughs> the poop sax music on a cassette tape to be now transferred to a CD, a CD. for our enjoyment. So um, that's something that we're very, very proud of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, to go back to your question, in addition to having um, some of the things that we've already talked about, the school's activities, we will be highlighted uh, for three days on the almanac, which mm -hmm. is a customary thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be launching the, the Memory of the World Committee, which is our local committee, uh, UNESCO committee. Um, we'll be launching that one through a press conference, hopefully on the 15th of, of September, the 16th of, Sept of November, sorry. <laughs> and um, we have the opening of the Virgin Goddess Musical Legacy Exhibition on Wednesday. And we will have the Territorial Dress Up Day and the Cultural Food Fair. But the bulk of our activities are basically within the um, the schools and um, so we will be highlighting those activities very much. Well before mm -hmm. we close I just want to say that you both look very dashing in your territorial wear. <laughs> I, I really love it. I love the red. It, it really brings mm -hmm. a lot to to you both. Thank you. So thank you for thank joining you. us. Um, I think we have learned a lot about Culture Week and the importance of culture within our Virgin Islands and I think we'll all look forward to celebrating Culture Week from the 15th to the 20th of November. Yes. On this program, we have been speaking with the Director of the Department of Culture, Mrs. Luz Hodge Smith, and Deputy Director, Ms. Ann Leonard, on this year's Virgin Islands Culture Week, as the department continues to ensure the preservation of the Virgin Islands cultural heritage. On Friday, November 20th, be sure to inspire in your territorial attire by dressing in the territorial fabric in celebration of Virgin Islands Culture Week. Territorial fabric can be purchased at Clover's on Tortola and Classy Threads in the Valley Virgin Gorda. For more information, contact the Department of Culture at 284-468-4373 or email viculture at gov.vg. For the Department of Information and Public Relations and the Ministry of Education and Culture, I have been your GIS host, Bria Smith and it has been a pleasure having you with us. To keep up with the latest events and get your official government news, visit the government website at www.bvi.gov.vg or follow us on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter at BVI Government. <laughs>